Unity has just released their built-in object pooling system in version 2021. Object pooling is an optimization strategy allowing you to reuse components instead of destroying and creating them each time. Game objects, lists, and classes can all be pooled to save the garbage collector's CPU cycles, clearing deallocated memory from the heap. Object pooling is best used when a large number of objects are being spawned and destroyed in a short period of time. It's especially important when shipping to lower-end devices like mobile phones and tablets. Let's begin. So as pretty as that scene was with all the effects and sounds and uh, physics and stuff, they will just get in the way of this test. So what I've done is I've just changed it so 10 spawn uh, every 0.2 seconds without any effects and as soon as they collide with this floor here they just get destroyed. So let me just show you how I've actually set that up. So we've just got a reference to the shape prefab, a the amount that we're going to spawn and then in start I'm just starting a repeating function uh, where I just uh, iterate over the spawn amount and then spawn it, set it to a random position uh, in a unit sphere and then I initialize it by sending in this function into the object and then the object just caches that action and then when it hits the collider it calls the action which uh, destroys the object. So that may seem a little bit weird like why, why don't we just destroy the object from within the object but uh, it all makes sense in a minute. So now if we press play we'll see that it's just spawning and then colliding with the ground and being destroyed. But if we ramp that up to maybe 100 every 0.2 seconds, we'll see that the, the system is starting to stress a little bit. We're tanking down to about 20 to 30 FPS. And if we go to our analysis tools and our profiler, we will see that if we go on the spikes here, we'll see that we're actually allocating, uh, let's see here, so 39 KB of uh, memory every 0.2 seconds. 39, 39. Obviously that is, I mean, my computer's handling it okay, but on a mobile device, device you would be kaput. So uh, let's let's fix that. Let's, let's make this uh, object pooled. So the first thing we will do is create a private object pool. And this will be of type shape because that is uh, what I am using. And let's just call this pool. And then in start here, let's make a new object pool. The way pooling works is, say you've got a thousand objects that you need to instantiate every second, right? Um, if you're creating and destroying those objects, uh, it causes a lot of garbage that the garbage collector has to come and clean up, right? So instead of instantiating and destroying them all the time, how about you just instantiate them once, and then once they're done, once you, you've finished with them, you disable it, and then when you need another one of these objects, you just grab one that you've already used and disabled, and you just re-enable it, right? And then you put it into the position that you need it, and then away you go and you just keep reusing these objects which means the memory is not constantly being um, allocated and deallocated which means the garbage collector doesn't need to do anything with it um, so that's how it works and as you can see this function takes a create function a on get function a release function so these are all the actions that we need to tell unity what to do with in order to pool our object efficiently because they have no idea what object we're using we could just be using a normal game object that we just need to instantiate and destroy we could be using a bullet like the bullet could uh potentially need to be instantiated every single time to give it a launch velocity you know could be using like boxes that need to be they could break or something and you need to rebuild them who, who knows what it is uh, you probably shouldn't be using object pulling for that last one anyway so let's create our first required function here which is the create function so this is what unity is going to call when there are no objects in the pool available so they need to create one so uh, for our create function all we're going to be doing is returning an instantiated shape prefab right that's all we need to do to create this Okay, so what's next? It is the onGet function. So this is the function that is called when we ask for an object and there is one available in the pool. Okay, so this one will take, uh, will it returns a shape, right? And with this shape, what are we gonna do? Well, usually the, the most basic form of object pooling is disabling and enabling. So what we can do is we'll say shape.gameObject, set active, true. Okay, so now we've handled our on get. Next one is on release. So this one is when we're done with the object and we need to give it back to the pool. So this one will be shape. 
And then we'll do the same, but in reverse. So game object set active and false. And the last one here is our destroy action. So this pool will always spawn objects when we ask for them, even if it's above the maximum. Uh, once we've spawned it and it goes to return to the pool, if the pool is already filled, uh, it will destroy the object instead. So for this one, it's just going to be a normal destroy function and it will put our shape game object. Okay, so we've got a few other things to fill out here before we're done. Uh, this one is collection check. So basically you can save uh, CPU cycles by turning this off. And what this does is if you have an object that you've already returned to the pool, if you try to return that again to the pool, uh, it will cause some bad problems, right? So Unity can handle this for you. And they and basically, if you try to return this object that's already been returned, uh, Unity will say, nope, it's already in the pool, let's just ignore it. Uh, but that takes CPU cycles. So if you're sure of your code and you know that will never happen, you can check this to off, to false, sorry, and you can save a little bit of CPU time. Okay, the next one is default capacity. So this one may seem simple, uh, if you know how an array works, this by the way, under the hood, this specific object pool uses an array. So if you know how an array works, say you instantiate an array with uh, a size of 10, it is allocating enough memory to store those 10 objects. Even if you've got no objects in that array, it is still holding enough memory to store the 10. Uh, so, and, and in addition, uh, resizing arrays can be expensive, okay? So really what you wanna do with, de with default capacity is if you know there is only ever gonna be 10, you should set it to 10. If you think there might be 11, you should set it to 11. But there's also the scenario where potentially in there could be 100, but most of the time there's only 10, okay? So if you set it to 10, that's cool. As long as your max size is 100, you can, it will expand as it goes, but that is expensive because uh, say you've got 10 and then you just get one more, this array now has to resize to 11 and then I might have to resize to 12 and 13 and 14, right? And that takes a lot of CPU cycles, whereas you probably would have been better off setting it to 100 to begin with, so it didn't have to do 90 uh, array resizes, okay? so. Play around with these numbers, depending on your needs of the game, uh, you may get better results starting it small and letting it expand or starting it at the full size. Uh, it does seem kind of silly to uh, start an array at 100 and then in your map you may only use like two, you know, so you're still taking all the memory of 100. So I'm going to set mine to 10 for now. And then max size I'm also going to set to, uh, actually I'll set that to 20. And then that is it. That is how we create our pool. We've got our create function, our get function, our release function, and then our destroy function, our collection checks, which we've said false because I'm pretty sure that this code will be just fine. Uh, 10 capacity and then 20 max size. Cool. So we've created our pool. And now as it would, as we're benchmarking these two, let's create a little serialized field here so we can change it in the editor. Uh, use pool, okay. So then in our spawn function, instead here, uh, we're instantiating it, instantiating it. We can say, are we using the pool? If we are, let's grab it from the pool instead of instantiating. So pool dot get, and it is literally that easy. You, you are just grabbing something from the pool. Otherwise let's instantiate it, right? Cause we're not using the pool. And then this is why I am actually sending this uh, action into the shape because I want to handle this killing logic uh, in the spawner, okay? Because it's easy for us to kind of just pass and see what's going on. Uh, so just, just to iterate, I'm sending in this function into the shape init uh, so that it knows what to do once, once it hits that, uh, that ground. So then here we can say if we're using the pool, Instead of destroying it, let's do shape. Nope, let's not do that. Let's do pool, release, and then send in our shape. Else we will destroy it because we're not using the pool. Okay, so if we go to our spawner and we make this 100, which I believe was what I was using for that initial test, right? So this is without the pool. And if we go to our analysis and profiler, 
just let it run for a little bit and then go here we will see that it is allocating 39 kb and if we go here we'll see that it is all in fact from instantiating well most from instantiating all right so we can remove this uh th this is 22 kb of instantiating every uh, 0.2 seconds so let's see what we can do with object pooling to improve this outcome get rid of that let's turn on pool objects and let's make the default capacity to 100 and then 800 okay so let's give that a shot and yeah, if you remember last time, we were tanking FPS pretty bad, right? So now we're staying around 60, 70. Uh, so that's a massive improvement just on FPS. If we go to uh, our analysis tool here, and actually it would be better if we reset it. So let's reset it. And then I will pause it straight away, right? And so we should know that these, these first ones here, uh, we actually are instantiating our objects, aren't we? So the, the pool needs to fill up first. So we can see here instantiate, it's allocating 22 KB of uh, garbage. And that will be the same for all of these here. But if we let our pool fill up to capacity, so let's just give it a few seconds. And then we try again here, we will see that now there is no allocation happening on instantiate and we're just activating, which obviously doesn't need to allocate any additional memory because we've already spawned the object. All we're doing is enabling it. Uh, so. As you can see, like my computer can handle both of these quite well, but on a mobile device, uh, saving that amount of memory on allocating and deallocating will significantly improve the performance of your game. So as I talk, let's just uh, just maximize this as it's a little bit prettier. So actually that's, it's too chaotic for me, too crazy. Let's uh, reduce that down to like five. Yeah, oh, but it's so boring now that I've removed the effects. And little side note, which I'll probably remove in the final edit. So I made this scene before I went to bed last night, like right before I went to bed, and my brain felt the need to uh, imagine these falling T's all night long. Like I would wake up and then I would go back to sleep to more falling T's. So it may look pretty to you, but I just want to get this out of my face. <laughs> so, uh, side note. So. That is the standard uh, object pool that Unity has provided. They also provide a few other options. They provide a linked pool. So a linked pool has a little bit of different setup, but the difference between an object pool and a linked pool is object pool stores their, um, all the elements in an array. So as I was saying before, if you have a default capacity of 50, even if you've got zero items in that capacity, it's still gonna take the memory of the 50 elements, right? A linked pool uh, doesn't take any memory if there's no elements in there. But the downside is that it's, it's more expensive to manage, basically. It will be more effort for the CPU to grab them from the pool and release them full from the pool. So really, uh, you really need to decide, do you favor the memory here? Do you need every little bit of memory that you can possibly pull out or do you need uh, better management on the CPU? So that's the difference there. So Unity has also given us a whole bunch of other pools, which I'll put up on the screen now, and you can go uh, look at them individually. They're all really amazing. What I will do though, is I'll show you one more list uh, that I think is absolutely amazing. One, one more collection, sorry. So say you're, just pretend this is the update function, right? Um, and we, actually, why, why would I pretend when I can do it? So that's silly. So let's just make the update function here. Okay, say we are doing some kind of like pathfinding logic, right? And we, we need a list in this loop. So uh, my list equals new list, and this will just be like an integer list, right? And then we're using the list here and then it goes out of scope. So uh, the memory will be deallocated and the garbage collector will come and clean it up. So we're creating a new list. Whoops. We're creating a new list every single loop of update. We can actually avoid the allocation and deallocation of this. I mean, technically you can just create your list out here, right? But who knows, you might have a, you might have 10 lists here. You do really want to just create it here to not deallocate. So what can you do about that? Well, we can say my list now is not equal to a new list, but we can do this generic pool, right? And this will be of type list integer. And we can say get, and this will just generate a list of that type, right? 
for us to use. So now we can use this. So let's say my list dot add, and let's just say 69, right? Just a random number. And then uh, this will go, instead of just letting it go out of scope, we can now uh, say generic pool of type list int release my list. So then this will release it back to the pool, right? And we could release 10 lists here. And then next time that this is called, it will grab one of the lists that we just released. Now, obviously we would still need to clear this list, right? We, we, we don't want to continue using this list. Uh, we, we might not want 69 in them. We might want another completely random number. Uh, so, I mean, you might actually have to do this dot clear, but that should be a lot better than uh, allocating and deallocating the memory for the list it itself. In addition, you can actually use this to uh, store your own classes. So let's just say this is my class. And in here, I'm going to have a string called hello, right? So now we can actually, uh, let's just remove this and I'll do it from scratch. So my class, right? I need a version of the, I need a version of my class. And this is going to be from the generic pool of type my class. And I'm going to get it. And then in here, I'm going to set my class dot hello equals hello. And then I'm going to release it again. So generic pool, my class dot release my class. And just to illustrate this, let's set a breakpoint here. Attach to Unity and let's play it. And here we go. So we've grabbed our, our first class from the pool. And as you can see, it is already constructed it, right? And there's nothing in hello. Let's now set hello to hello, and then let's release it to the pool. Okay, and now on the next loop of update, we have now grabbed another version of my class. And as you can see, we've only got one in there. So it's grabbed the one that we've already made and set to hello. And we'll just keep recycling this instead of creating a new version of my class and then deallocating it every single loop. So obviously, you know, you need to think about resetting the object if you need to, but generally it's going to be better than creating a new one and deleting it every single time. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Uh, I'm going to include a script down below of uh, how I am setting up my object pooling. So basically I'm creating a script and I'm deriving from it. So then that turns my derived script into like a really easy object pooler where I only need to override some of these functions if I need to. Uh, so check that out if you want, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye.